really excited, as always, and very pleased to have Dr. Todd Pesek back with us. This will be Dr. Todd's, I believe this is his third lecture. We've had you here a few times last year. We kicked off in November uh, the new program for Heinen's. And if you weren't a part of the November session, you're going to hear a little bit more from Dr. Todd today just about what we're doing here at Parker. We've got a very unique program going on. We've partnered with the Heinen's group to provide a wellness club program here at HQ. And there's a lot of good perks involved with that. If you've not signed up, Dr. Todd will share a little bit about with you, but you've got materials at your, at your seat that give you a little high-level overview of the program, some healthy discounts that you could receive, promotions. So there's a lot more Dr. Todd will share with you. Today we're going to talk about eating yourself super again. I've had a lot of folks ask, is it the same of what I've heard? This is a building process and Dr. Todd has new tidbits and new information to share with you every time. So today he's going to focus on three processes and some steps of success that are going to uh, focus around superfoods. And before I turn things over to Dr. Todd, I want to mention that because we've had such great turnouts, we're going to be giving away a $50 gift card this afternoon. For everybody, if you've signed up for the lecture, you're in the drawing automatically. So we'll pull that name this afternoon, as well as we're going to give away uh, one of Dr. Todd's uh, books. So uh, you may get a surprise phone call this afternoon if you're the lucky winner. And then the last thing I wanted to mention to everybody is we're going to be doing uh, seminars with, with Heinen's. They've prepared this lovely food of uh, superfood entrees. They're going to be here quarterly. So their next uh, noontime learning here at Parker will be in May. I will share that information with you. And if you did register, you should have already received an email from me this morning with a link that just takes you out to where we house this information on POL. I know it's not always easy to find. That's why I try to send you the direct link. So you could watch today's session after the fact. You could get a copy of his presentation after the fact. It'll be recorded and it'll be posted out there. And then lastly, Dr. Todd, will you share information about your new website, eatyourselfsuper.com? Yes. Perfect. You're going to love it. That's new. And I will also share that information after today. So let's give a really warm welcome to our guest, Dr. Todd Pesek. You know, how revolutionary, right? A doctor in a grocery store. <laughs> You'd think it'd be common sense, yet it isn't. But uh, myself and my collaboration and partnership with Heinen's hopefully will set the stage for a new uh, transform, basically a transformative, uh, you know, paradigm in health and healthcare. And I, and I think that the involvement of really uh, innovative cutting-edge companies such as yourself really add tremendous value to that. I, I really love the fact that Parker puts the health of, of uh, their employees first and foremost. This is something that I think most corporations globally would really benefit from following in, uh, in that model. So as Annette said, we're going to talk about three-step Eat yourself super success. And as she said, you know, that we have a lot of different things going on. Right? We have the Heinen's Dr. Todd Wellness Club that you all can sign up for. Uh, you have a little packet of information there in front of you. The Parker Wellness Program, where you'll get monthly tips on healthful eating and healthy strategies, as well as discounts and product promotions and whatnot, relevant product promotions. And um, you know, in addition to being uh, an author, holistic physician, author, and chief medical officer of Heinen's, I'm the uh, co-founder of Great Lakes Health Institute, which is Northeastern Ohio's leading alternative medicine and uh, integrative medicine clinic right up the road from you all in Lyndhurst, right on Mayfield. And uh, Parker, being the innovator that they are in health and, uh, health and wellness for their employees, is, is offering... Uh, you know, to pay 100% of your signups for your Parker Wellness program with the Dr. Todd and Heinen's uh, programming, as well as new patient visits and tailored personalized health and wellness plans, uh, you know, at, at my private practice in Lyndhurst, right up the road from you. So for those of you that are interested in signing up for either one or both of those programs, the sheets are in your packets at your tables. 
uh, fill those out and hand them in. Uh, for the Great Lakes Health Institute stuff, I draw your attention to my health coach, Sarah. She's in the back. Fill them out and give them to her at the end. And for the Parker Wellness Program, uh, take it to any Heinen's representative and they will uh, point you in the, into the back here because you'll have to sign up for that and we'll, uh, we'll help facilitate that process for you. And there are a few other things in your, in your packets that we'll go through as we, as we talk here. Um, I always get this, you know, are you a real doctor? Absolutely, right? But I define myself differently. I'm an Appalachian root doctor who went to medical school, right? Um, you know, I understand that, that medicine is commonsensical, right? And we're going to talk about some of that as we go. I've been conventionally trained to the hilt. I went to uh, Northeastern University for a Bachelor's of Science in Biochemistry, where I graduated in, in the top of my class. I went to Ohio State in the Cleveland Clinic for medical school. And I trained full time at the Cleveland Clinic for three years. And uh, I completed my training in medicine at Case. So I'm locally trained conventionally, as I said, to the hilt. Yet I chose to walk away from drugs and surgery and that type of medical model for a much simpler one, one that has sustained health and wellness strategies since time immemorial. And we're going to share some of those with you today. Thousands of patients. I don't use drugs. I use only food and herbs to treat these maladies, not pharmaceutical drugs. So a wise elder once told me, always start your presentations off with some wisdom. And the one that I really like to tether these kind of talks to is, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. These words were spoken by Hippocrates of Kos some 2,400 years ago. For those of you that don't know, Hippocrates is hailed as the father of modern medicine, right? Yet, with sentiment like that, picture what he would be thinking if he saw the state of modern medical affairs. I can't speak for him, but I'm pretty sure he would be uh, very disapproving, right? And the fact that interested business plays way too prominent a role in standard of care medicine. You know, it's, the answer isn't take this drug or have this surgery. The answer is be personally accountable for your health and wellness. I also wanted to take a minute to tell you a quick story about this gentleman. He once told me, he taught, that A, age is an emotion, and B, don't complain about aging and getting old because it is a privilege denied to so many, right? It is a privilege denied to so many. He said age gracefully and healthfully and use these tools. This, this man was a yogi. And I'd like all of us just to take a quick moment of silence to be gracious, grateful for the health and wellness that we have and being here together and having all these wonderful things to share with one another. All right, having said that, I want you to think about this for a second. That same wise elder that told me to start presentations off with wisdom also said, get them thinking. So I'm going to get you thinking. I want you to think about health. What is it to you and to others? Just kind of think of a framework, a definition. What does it mean to you? Here's what it means to Wikipedia. They say that health is the level of functional and or metabolic efficiency of an organism at both the micro and macro level. The gold standard Wikipedia, right? <laughs> in the medical field, health is commonly defined as an organism's ability to efficiently respond to challenges and effectively restore and sustain homeostasis or balance. Pretty good, huh? Here's what the World Health Organization says health is. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Another 
decent one. Here's what I say. My several decades of work cross-culturally and internationally on health and wellness, that it's complex interplay of systems and balance and include constructs of the mind, body, spirit, and environment. In fact, those constructs are inextricably intertwined. These are false dichotomies. It's all one. Anyway, so suffice it to say that health is complicated, multivariate, and it varies in perceptions individually, culturally, socially, and then some. Right? Every one of you has a different thought of what health is. Yet, it is needed by everyone, and it's affected by everything. This isn't the answer to health. I love this little thing, right? It says, this drug may cause dizziness, chest pain, diarrhea, lots, loss of memory, blood clots, joint pain, and anal leakage. <laughs> are those the side effects? Nope, those are the main effects. <laughs> the side effect is that it might lower your cholesterol. This is, this is really a very sad state of affairs in this country. People are being subjugated by the pharmaceutical companies, right? The answer for cholesterol is not drug or drug-based intervention. The answer to cholesterol is holistic health approaches, diet and exercise, lifestyle. Here's how that happened. This standard of care you got big pharma here toting on the strings of the FDA. This is so blatantly known and understood, yet it still, still affects our standard of care. You walk into your doctor's office, take this drug, take that drug. Now, I believe that you would be hard pressed to find a doctor out there who wouldn't tell you to eat healthfully, right? However, having said that, you would be equally hard-pressed to find one that would be able to enable you to do so. Isn't that correct? And the reason for that is because they're taught one thing. There's a big book written about health and wellness that these doctors get, and the book is written by the pharmaceutical industry. Unfortunate, but true. Here is the answer, though. The secret to long life is our wise elders the world over teach us, our philosophy and outlook needs to uh, encompass optimism, resilience, and present moment living. Optimism, there's a great study just out, Johns Hopkins, I believe, talks about you know, pessimism versus optimism. The optimists, everything else normalized across the board, diet, lifestyle, smokers are the smokers, the drinkers are the drinkers, the healthy eaters are the healthy eaters, exercisers are the exercisers. The optimists live about 13 years longer. Right? That's a positive mental outlook. They also teach that we need to be daily active, right? And connected to nature, our longest lived elders the world over. And they teach their diet and nutritional practices, which is what we're going to spend a good portion of the time on today. And it's that they subsist on superfoods. Now, this is based on decades of my own international research on secrets of long life. Decades world over. And it's all distilled down for you along with my background as, a, as an Appala Appalachian root healer, root doctor, right, and a private practice physician with thousands of patients who uses only food and herbs to get people off of those drugs and onto a path of sustained wellness. It's all in here, at least the beginning part. And with that, my partnership with Heinen's as their chief medical officer, we're rolling out a simple four-pronged strategy that enables the eating portion of this, right? It's incorporate superfoods, manage fats, manage sugars, and then know your source. We're going to talk about these in brief in the following slide following this one. Um, but first, I wanted to just remind you this definition of superfoods, right? We kind of talked about some of this the last time we met. Just, just a quick review here. Right? Superfoods are plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense, and therefore health-empowering foods. We're going to talk about why that is 
you know, in some subsequent slides. But remember, if you think about the standard American diet and look at this, it's the exact opposite, isn't it? Standard American diet is comprised of calorie dense but nutrient sparse food. And there's the problem, right? Because our diets don't become satiated with calories. They become satiated with nutrients. You eat because your body needs a certain nutrient, right? And when you're eating, if you're not getting the nutrient you need, your body continues to eat, continues to overeat. It's in the case of refined white flours and sugars and fats. Your body will continue to eat those as it seeks out its minerals and its trace minerals and its vitamins and the things that it needs to be healthy, much to the detriment of your health. So this is the answer as taught by our longest lived elders the world over. And here's our strategy, right? We want you to incorporate plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense greens, rainbow veggies and fruits, balanced proteins, omega-3 fats, and functional foods into your daily plate. We want you to focus on omega-3 fat and minimize all else. We want you to go low glycemic while minimizing simple sugars, and in particular fructose. And we want you to know your source. You have to think not only organic, but also local, seasonal, sustainable celebrations of food. Right? There's a lot of different things that go into these, uh, these processes. Food procurement, it's become very complex, unfortunately, but true. Um, and read all labels. This is very important. If you can't pronounce it, put it back on the shelf. And we also talked about, so we talked about the, the eat yourself super strategy here prior. And, we, and we, we also talked about the smart supplementation strategy prior. Both of these are available in full length presentation on the website uh, that Annette alluded to earlier and also your own internal website. My website is eatyourselfsuper.com where there's a lot of information, there's a blog, there's informational clips and snippets and videos in these full-length presentations for your learning and enjoyment. Um, I am definitely uh, encourage you all to check that out and just kind of review these things. But the basis for the smart supplementation component to this is even if you're eating perfectly in this day and age, we need a little bit of help. So our food system and the stressors of modern day living now I just wanted to talk briefly about some major health challenges and talk about how this strategy is relevant to uh, ameliorating those, right? So you think about health issues here in this country. What's our number one? Who knows? It, a it actually, it has been for some time heart disease, right? It's kind of heart disease running neck and neck with cancer. It's debatable, though, how the data are collated and collected, and it's becoming apparent that, that cancer is running uh, rampant out there, right? Like James Frackleton, MD, the, uh, one of the, uh, the elders whose practice I took over, um, always said, life is like this moat, <clears throat> and you're walking down it with alligators on both sides. Well, those alligators are heart disease and cancer. <laughs> He would always say that one of them is going to get you, um, you know, and you just need to work to stave those off. Heart attack, stroke, diabetes, these are all really vascular diseases and metabolic diseases kind of combined because of the foods we eat. Cancer is kind of an end result of these processes and other processes that drive these like inflammation, right? The health crisis is that these leading killers need not exist. In fact, they can be prevented and even treated with dietary and lifestyle measures. The science is clear on this fact. It's absolutely clear. Life expectancy in the US is lower than that of many high income countries like Japan, Canada, Sweden, and France. And environmental toxicities and personal toxic burdens continue to grow, further confounding our health picture. So, just to kind of recap some of these major issues that drive all of those aforementioned pathologies, the number one, right, is inflammation. How many of y'all thought inflammation was, was, was good? Raise your hand. How many think it's bad? How many think it's both? 
Right, exactly. I think it's both. It is both. It's a physiologic process, right? If you get ill, infected by something, body becomes inflamed, fight it off. If you trip and, you know, scrape your elbow or uh, bang your knee, body becomes inflamed to heal it, right? So we need inflammatory processes. The problem ensues with chronic inflammation, right? Chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is driven by lifestyle and dietary choices. In turn, chronic inflammation over the period of one's life drives all these things, cancer, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, pulmonary, arthritis, autoimmune diseases, neurologic disease, in fact, everything, right? Drives everything. Now, the answer to this is an anti-inflammatory kind of diet and lifestyle. We'll just talk about that in superfoods. So arterial disease, which drives coronary artery disease, and stroke, so heart attacks and stroke, is nothing more than fat toxicity, right? Body takes in so much fat, doesn't know what to do with it, stores it in the vascular linings, over time occludes those vessels. So if it happens in the heart, it's a heart attack. Happens in the brain, it's a stroke. Happens in the foot, it's claudication. You get the picture, so the solution is to mitigate fat toxicity, right? Sugar toxicity, which drives diabetes, drives inflammation. They both drive inflammation in each other. It's all intertwined. It's driven by this process called glycation end products. So we have all these proteins in our bodies, our cells, cell membranes, vascular linings, you name it. What happens is, just like if you were to open a can of pop and dump it on the floor, the water would evaporate and you could, you'd step on it be tacky, right? Sticky. Sugars. It's exactly what, what the consumption of sugar and the spikes of sugar in your bloodstream do to your body. It makes it sticky. Glycated proteins, and they, they, they then drive inflammation and confound this whole process. So it's this complex interplay. And the solution is to eat superfoods, right? The solution is to eat foods that combat chronic inflammatory processes, to eat foods that have a low glycemic index that don't spike your sugar, foods that have a balanced fat ratio, specifically heavy on the omega-3 fats. All right, so, and I really wanted to, to try to condense, you know, these, the simple eat yourself super strategy into kind of a three-step success program. And that's really what we're going to do here today. So these are the three points, now that we kind of have the need for this stuff, the three points that I really want you to resonate on and take home with you. Because they're easy, right? All right, so number one, eat salad. <laughs> right? And I'm not talking about, like, iceberg lettuce. Right? That's not salad. Iceberg, though, unfortunately, but true, this is what most Americans kind of envision when one says salad, right? And they say things like, well, I don't eat salad, I don't like lettuce, or my kids won't eat salad, it's not good for them. Or uh, they know it's good for them, but they won't eat salad anyway. And, it, and it's like, well, kids aren't stupid. They know what good food is. If you give them a, a salad of iceberg lettuce and addressing with preservatives, they're not going to gravitate toward it. <clears throat> so we wanted to just kind of demonstrate this simple strategy. What I want you to do is start with a salad a day, then a salad a meal, and then make the salad the meal. But a real salad, right? We want you to pile on the greens, green, dark green leafy vegetables, mesclun, arugula, chard, baby greens, kales, right? Cruciferous veggies. Add all the rainbow veggies and fruits that you could possibly desire, right? Throw on some sprouted nuts and seeds. And don't forget your omega-3 fats, chia, flax, walnuts, all these kind of things. And adding your favorite functional foods like fresh herbs and even fermented foods that have uh, beneficial probiotics, lacto-fermentation products, bioavailable B vitamins, all these things that we need, our ancestors, uh, you know, thrived upon. So 
Tip one, we set up our, our lunch, our superfood sampling, based on these tips. And the first one, eat your salad, you have that. You have the beautiful greens. With How many of y'all tried the uh, fermented sauerkraut beet? Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody. Anybody not like it? Let me see your hand. All right. Yeah, about 99.9% .9 liked it, right? <laughs> All right. And the sprouted nuts and sprouted seeds and even the dressing, for those of you that didn't want the full-flavored kraut, even the dressing is fermented. So our bodies need those things. Our ancestors ate lots and lots of fermented foods for a lot of different uh, reasons. And one of the major things that these fermented foods do is they promote liver and gut health. That's going to be one of our next topics. In fact, the next topic. We're really going to focus on that. This is incredibly important. Incredibly important. So salad, it isn't just this pile of iceberg lettuce with a nasty dressing. It's real. It's real food. Right? It's got greens, lots of them. Greens are the most nutritive food there is. Calorie for calorie, ounce for ounce, they are the most nutritive food in existence. In addition, chlorophyll itself, the principal green pigment in, uh, in, in greens and plants, is itself anti-inflammatory. They are anti-inflammatory molecules. They're alkalinizing. They work against our products, uh, our uh, metabolic byproducts, which are acidic. We, we need for life and for health to be in a more alkaline balance. Greens help us do that. And they're also deeply detoxifying. These greens in particular, uh, you know, cruciferous veggies and um, like cabbage, for example, are rich in sulfur. And sulfur our body needs to produce our most powerful antioxidants, right? And those antioxidants help us detoxify. You know, in, in, in the modern day, unfortunately but true, we're exposed to many things that our ancestors weren't exposed to, and these things drive disease, right? Plastics, PCBs, endocrine disruptors, xenoestrogens, heavy metals, you name it. These are things that we accumulate and need to get out of our bodies, right? We need to get these sequestered toxins and poisons out of our bodies. And greens help us do that. So a happy salad. I actually made this cutting board salad uh, for dinner. And I didn't even, by the time I turned around, it was gone. My kids devoured it. And it's just a pile of greens, tomatoes with, uh, this is, um, uh, it's pomegranate aged balsamic vinegar, right? It's like a treat for kids. I mean, they just, they go right through it. Another huge detoxifier is dandelion, dandelion greens. Um, you know, and these things are hugely important for us in terms of detoxifying, supporting liver and liver health. As I said, throw it all in your salad. Throw it in there with the rainbow of fruits and veggies. We need this diversity of plant pigments and antioxidants. Ferment it if you want. Um, throw in some balanced proteins. All right, we had some examples of these. We have a, a, an amazing quinoa salad. And I um, well, want to point out to you all that we have a, a great salad bar set up and scenario at Heinen's. And uh, I'd encourage you all to check it in. Those salads are ready-made. Um, you'll see Superfoods Pyramid on um, the, the my first choice salads, and you'll also see other salads that have superfoods added. It's kind of meeting you where you're willing to be met. I think in any way, shape, or form, you can inc incorporate more greens and more fruits and veggies, uh, you know, as a step in the right direction, and, and I'm happy with that. Um, so balanced proteins, right? Quinoa, soaked and sprouted legumes. You could throw all this stuff right on your salad. Make these amazing salads that actually are meals. Right? And your kids will love them, too. Just an amazing, um, amazing thing. Remember the protein myth? Our ancestors ate pretty much diets of 80% carbohydrates, right? And about 20% proteins and fats. Um, you know, really more like 80%, 15, 5% fats. But those are, those are uh, you know, kind of the numbers that we need to think about 
in terms of long-term health, health strategies. So we've been smoke screened by the meat and dairy industry for a long time. They've told us you need protein, you need this, you need that. Well, proteins, in particular animal-based proteins, are very difficult on your liver, your kidneys, um, your bodies in general. They're acidic, they drive inflammation. High uric acid burdens drive high blood pressure, and it just the list goes on and on. It really kind of keeps going. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that too as we go. Omega-3 fats, right? Just this is such an important thing. I like to spend a minute here because really, if, if you think about how our diets are so dysfunctional, I mean, it really comes down to almost one thing. You've all heard of essential fatty acids, right? 369, 369, 369. The media pounds it into your head, right? Well, forget what they tell you because you don't need 369. They're essential because your body can't make them. You need to get them from your diet, right? Now, your body can make the nines from the threes and the sixes, so forget about the nines. So the threes and the sixes are what it comes down to, right? Whereas our ancestors ate these things in like a one-to-one -one ratio, threes to six, we eat them more like a one-to-thirty ratio, three to six. And, and that's the problem because the threes the threes are metabolized into anti-inflammatory compounds. Whereas the sixes are the precursors to all of your inflammatory mediators. Right? So sixes drive inflammation, threes are anti-inflammation, and they used to be in balance in our diets, but now we're eating a preponderance of omega-6 pro-inflammatory fats. That's the problem. It really happened uh, you know, if you think about it, that's kind of interesting. Um, most of humanity subsists on like five plants, corn, rice, wheat, soy, and barley, right? Corn, rice, wheat, soy, and barley. Most of those are cereal grains, which are high in omega-6 fats. Never mind the 400,000 plus species of plants out there most of which have edible roots, shoots, tubers, leaves that our ancestors ate, right? That were high in omega-3 fats. So omega-3 fats think greens and seeds. Greens and seeds. Well, these are high in omega-3 fats. And we need much more of those to balance out that omega-6 preponderance. Not only do people eat foods high in omega-6, but they feed foods high in omega-6 to animals and then eat those animals, which also perpetuates that pro-inflammatory state, right? Because the animals are inflamed too. Corn, rice, wheat, soy, and barley. The global rights to those few plants are owned by four companies. That's why everybody's eating them. We need to change that. Omega-3 fats are hugely important. Sprouted flax seeds, sprouted flax crackers, chia seeds, walnuts. They look like little brains, don't they? I've, I've had more patient feedback just when I tell them, hey, look, all I want you to do is eat two tablespoons of chia seeds a day in the morning. I've had more patient feedback on that one simple little intervention than pretty much most of anything else. That simple little thing, simple little process of chia seeds in the morning, energizing, vitalizing, better mental clarity, sustained blood sugar levels throughout the day, just feeling better. So I'd encourage you all to try it. It's crucially important. And you can throw them on your salad. Right? And then functional foods. Right? Your salads have to be more than just salad, as I said. We want you to have the fermented stuff. Um, we tried uh, you know, fermented cabbage and beets. And this is a traditional fermentation crock. How many of y'all uh, remember mom and dad or grandma and grandpa doing this? Anybody? Yeah, see, there you go. Okay, wait, everybody that raised your hand, keep it up. How many of you all still do that? Raise your hand now. All right, wow. One person. That's great. Congrats on that, Chris. <laughs> That's awesome. 
I think we should do a kraut making class here, I think, next, right? How many of you all would be interested in that? Yeah, it's really easy. You know, my book, it's, it's set up, you know, in two parts. The first half, it's the basics, kind of what we're going over now. And then the second half is on setting your superfoods kitchen up. And there's a lot of recipes, one of which is the sauerkraut recipe. So I'd encourage you all, if you haven't read it yet, read it. Um, we'll be doing a book signing after. Um, so we'll, uh, we have copies here to sign. And um, that'll be after the presentation. But, you know, so remember your fermented stuff, right? Remember your salads, your seaweed salads, bioavailable minerals and trace minerals. The ocean and the, the concentrated oceanic goodness in, in seaweed is responsible for, the, for uh, the health of our ancestors literally for millennia. Our ancestors followed the oceans. They had an, a dependence on, on this oceanic goodness, on vegetal sea life, right? Our thyroid glands require iodine and thyroid hormone precursors, right? which come in, iod in seaweed. And our bodies really need those trace minerals, especially in context of toxins now in our environment that look like those trace minerals. So there's uh, one additional thing uh, that's incredibly important with regard to sea vegetables and having, um, you know, incorporating them into your diet is making them so they taste good. For a lot of people, that's a challenge. I love it. But there are the correct combinations of food. And in my book, I talk about some great seaweed salad recipes that, that will get the most stalwart uh, seaweed um, non-fan and convert them into a sea, seaweed lover, right? <laughs> so try this. Try some of those recipes. Um, but I just really want to remind you all that you know, plants are the basis of medicine, really. And even, you know, modern medical drugs, right? The conservative estimates are like 25% of modern medical drugs actually come from plants. I'd say it's more like 50, right? And our traditional use of plants. For example, diabetes, first line medication, right? Metformin comes from French lilac, right? All of those things, even the drugs that make surgery possible come from plants, right? Pain medication, just you name it, comes from plants. And this is just to remind you that those things aren't only available in these highly refined distilled forms of medical drugs or compounds. They're available in the thyme, parsley, sage, right? mint, lamacy, just like we have back there for you to throw in your salads. These are anti-inflammatory, antibacterial opportunities to consume things such as curcumin or turmeric, which is an amazing, amazing spice that drives inflammation down by in, uh, inhibiting NF-kappa B. Um, so it's you know, based, probably the most important anti-inflammatory spice out there. There's a lot of others very similarly, though. So I'd encourage you all to really start thinking about what you put on your salads and what you put in your food, for that matter, and how, and how much, and how often, because it, it is all cumulative. So here, I just wanted to show you this, because I was trying to think about ways to inspire salad, right? And, and this is my daughter Lily's birthday. We brought... We brought brought nothing but salad. As I'm like unloading the car, I see the other kid's parents saying, well, only salad? Yeah, only salad. Trust me, your kids won't go home hungry. They were amazed. They, the kids devoured all the salads that I brought. It was just a salad smorgasbord. I mean, what kid wouldn't eat this, you know? Um, in fact, when we do programming now in the local schools, the Heinen's Dr. Todd partnership, so we bring salads and some favorite recipes. The kids love them. What kid wouldn't love rainbow salad stew? And there are veggies in here. Look at them all smiling. <laughs> you know, so I, <laughs> this kid wanted the recipe to take home. <laughs> so 
you know, make salads fun, right? I'm gonna, I want a salad inspire you all. <laughs> for your kids, too. And by the way, the recipe for this is in my book, Fruit Stew. All right. <clears throat> so that was tip number one, salad. Eat salad. Tip number two is eat snacks. Eat snacks, right? The average American has two to three snacks a day and derives a quarter to a half of their daily calories from snacking. Isn't that amazing? How many of you all don't snack? Let me see. All right, so about 5%, right? Well, you have to snack. And the rest of you have to snack healthier. I mean, that's just the, how it goes, all right? Because healthy snacks, they increase nutrient intake by being nutritious and delicious, right? Think calorie, sparse, nutrient-dense food, right? They sustain your energy levels and level blood sugar. So even if it's only a few cashews, you know, or a handful of greens or an apple, it just stabilizes. You know, what you don't want to have happen is you, you, your body kind of evolves into this starvation state where it's really hungry and then you eat a bunch of food that spikes your blood sugar, spikes your blood fat. Spikes these, cause, because that's when those toxic uh, scenarios can occur, right? You need to be more metered. Your physiology is set up to be more metered, right? And with that, you'll get sustained energy levels, and level your blood sugar, and avoid sugar toxicity and fat toxicity, provided you're eating the right snacks. Some of my favorites are back there. We're going to talk about them in a second. Frequent snacking also assists in recovery from stressors, physical and mental physical and mental. You know, it takes a lot of calories for your brains to be going, right? Do you ever wonder, do you ever notice like how um, when you got a, when, when you got a, a big deadline and, and you don't want to let the big guys down and you keep going and going and going, how hungry you get? That's because you are really going. You're channeling cosmic energy. <laughs> you got to fuel it with food, right? Um, you know, this, for example, this morning when I was putting together my presentation, I had, my smoothie was three times the size it normally was. I just needed extra energy, an extra boost, right? These things assist your recovery, not only physical stressors, right? Even physical activity, exercise, um, actual stress, which is a trauma, and you need to mitigate that trauma. But Brain tasks, mentation, right? Frequent snacking. When, when I traveled the world for those decades and learned the secrets of long life from our elders, the longest lived elders the world over, I worked with centenarians, even super centenarians. And their minds were as sharp as a tack, right? Do not accept the fact that you have to age with cognitive decline. Do not accept that. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. Having said that, we need to be aware of what's happening. Just as we talked about fat toxicity in the vessels, right? so too does that happen in microvasculature, right? these tiny little minutiary capillary networks in our brain, in our reproductive organs in our hands and feet and heart and head. Now, if a major vessel gets occluded with fat, it happens in the heart, it's a heart attack. It happens in the brain, it's a stroke. But it happens every day on a much smaller level in microvascular circulation, which drives, in part, cognitive decline. So we need to be aware of that you know, and mitigate that with healthier food choices inclusive of superfood snacking frequently throughout the day. There's a lot of different things out there like it. And the healthy snacks crowd out the bad, healthy, unhealthy snacks, right? So you're eating kale and arugula chips or some sprouted nut mixes, you're not gonna eat potato chips. In fact, if you have a handful of, of kale chips or uh, cabbage arugula chips or you know, sprouted pumpkin seeds before you eat your dinner, 
you're going to eat probably a third of what you would have just because your body got some nutrients. Remember, we don't get satiated with calories. We get satiated with nutrients. All right, so just a quick word on snacking. So, well, A, you have the entire universe of produce to snack on, right? Apples, carrots, celery. Just, you could eat handfuls of greens for a snack. But we made it really easy for you at Heinen's. I mean, check this out. Like, if you can't find a snack you want here, I really, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we, we have every snack you could possibly want, right? Um, from sprouted nut, living intention, sprouted nut mixes, sprouted granolas, uh, kale chips, arugula chips, sprouted seed mixes, um, many of which we le left out back for you all to sample, right? So how many of y'all tried those? Who tried the kale arugula chips, or the uh, cabbage arugula chips? Those are literally my favorite. I, I love those things. They're amazing. And they have chia. Any complaints about those snacks? All right. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to visit your local wellness consultant at Heinen's and have them show you where these superfood snacks are in their grocery store and eat them up. I carry these sprouted pumpkin seeds around with me everywhere I go. I mean, they're just great. You know, and I, I'm an avid, avid exerciser, um, uh, a lifelong Tai Chi practitioner, and um, I, I run pretty much like any one particular week, you know, 50 miles or so, and I, I, I actively move my body, you know, and, and I do so on superfoods, right? And so it's, I love it when people come up to me and they say, well, really, where do you get your protein? Or, you know, how do you do this and that? I certainly don't look malnourished is what I tell them. Okay? Number three, all right? Eat plants, right? But, well, how many, first of all, let me do this. How many of you all are vegans in the audience? All right. It's great. How many of you are almost vegans in the audience? Right? right, so these, here's what I tell people. The low-fat plant-based diet is unequivocally the gold standard diet in health. If you're there, great. That's where I am for a lot of different reasons, ethical included. That is where I am. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to be 100% low-fat plant-based, at least make better decisions with regard to, you know, the things that don't fall under the low-fat plant-based diet umbrella, right? Um, so eat plants, but if you're including animal foods in your diet, try minimizing the frequency and portion. So in other words, it isn't a 48-ounce ribeye steak and a little side salad, right? Flip it. <laughs> Flip it. Um, and start with a healthy animal, pasture-raised, uh, free-range, organic, right? Stuff that isn't, you know, fed a preponderance of omega-6 fats that's perpetually pro-inflamed that's then going to drive inflammation, which will ultimately lead to cancer and other diseases, right? You have to do it right, all right? And then recognize and implement plant-based alternatives, veggie kebabs. Those things were the first to go back there. I don't think I didn't notice that. So portion control, right? Um, you know, animal products, A, right? Minimize frequency and portion. B, start with a healthy animal, right? And then C, recognize and implement plant-based alternatives. Now, this isn't new information. Check this out. Uh, Forks Over Knives, which is actually a great movie I'd recommend y'all watch. Um, uh, Caldwell Esselstein is one of the guys behind all that. And he's a friend of mine. He's actually one of my uh, teachers at the Cleveland Clinic way back when. But anyway, uh, this is a New York Times article uh, from 1907. Cancer increasing among meat eaters. Now, I love this. Check this out particularly among the foreign-born using foods derived from diseased animals. Now check this out. 
On the other hand, Italians and Chinese, practically vegetarians, show the lowest mortality of all. Isn't that interesting? I mean, how many of you out there picture Italians as being vegetarian? Raise your hand. Seriously, raise your hand. Come on. Where, where, all right, where are my Italian ancestors out there? All right, yeah. All right, great. Of you all, do you not recall how Grandma ate? Right? She ate a big salad before dinner, and then a smaller, whole foods based serving of pasta, and rarely meats. Right? Isn't that right? Yeah. I don't. So the interested business has evolved our diet to consume nothing but animal products, and this is bad. It is not good. Okay, now here's another one that I loved here. It was, uh, the higher wages of America permit indulgence in them to a greater extent. Right? These diseases of civilization that we're enduring as a global, developed world are driving our disease. You know, this um, superfluous income that enables people eating whatever they want, however they want, has enabled interested business to gain a toehold and market the latest sexy thing, which is the 48-ounce ribeye and the little side salad. But that's not how it is. It's not how our ancestors ate. It's not how we need to eat for health. Probably the most comprehensive study on human nutrition ever done was the China study. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, read it. It just talks about, compares and contrasts, and builds on this article, actually, in the modern day. It shows China and how China eats traditionally and how China eats in the modern day and compares and contrasts remote villages still eating traditionally with the city centers that are eating the Western diet that's driving disease, heart disease, stroke, vascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. The point is, we just need to go back to eating like our ancestors. Those age-old practices, those secrets of long life practices that I elaborate on in my book. So before I conclude here, I have some financial disclosures. I'm the co-founding holistic physician of Great Lakes Health Institute. Founder of Dr. Todd's Superfoods. This is my label. You'll see it on my website at Heinen's and other places. Chief Medical Officer of Heinen's. And I'm also a tenured health sciences professor at CSU, um, of which Parker uh, has been a very generous supporter, and we thank you for that. I always tell people that one of my greatest socially responsibilities, in addition to being that of a physician, is, is being that of an educator. In fact, I would argue that they're one and the same. This is why I maintain my connection with students as I do. So many thanks and be well. And then lastly, in conclusion, I wanted to, I see the, Don, I see the big guy, Don Washkowitz, has joined. There he is. Um, and I just wanted to thank him for having me and for being, you know, at the forefront of such a, an, an open-minded and supportive uh, you know, company with regard to their putting their employees' health first. I think this is just a remarkable model, and uh, we're going to keep going with it. So thank you.